check this out. to Computer Visions. I'm Sharon Sheehan, and this is my co-host, Ray Tracy. Yeah. Computer animation is redefining the world of visual illusions, merging science, art, and motion pictures into a new digital cinema. Here we can see the influence of the American artist, Edward Hopper. Whoa, watch out! <laughs> In 1967, computer animation was new, and a young scientist began... After that, Dr. Blinn created Blobby Man, one of the first realistic computer animations of a human figure. Blobby Man was used to demonstrate the power of a then newly developed rendering technique. Back when we started out doing this, there were maybe like 50 people in the country who knew this. It was like an obscure hobby that we never believed that a whole lot of other people would really care about. Nowadays, you can go down to the supermarket and get fan magazines for computer graphics. And it's astounding that we've been kind of poking away at our terminals and having a good time, and then we look up and discover there's all these people looking over our shoulders now and, 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 and wanting to do it themselves and, and, and finding that it's interesting. It's your architecture. Unlike other computer characters, you were built entirely inside the computer using curved splines. A spline is created by bending a line anchored with control points. It takes quite a few control points to generate the complex shape of a human face. You began as a cross-section of 50 control points. These were then rotated about an axis, creating a surface with 2,400 control points. The hole in the center became your mouth, and the surrounding areas your chin, cheeks, and forehead. Well, what about my teeth and eyes? They were first sculpted and then texture mapped by taking a flat 2D picture and wrapping it onto the surface of a complex 3D computer object. This gives your eyes and teeth a more realistic look. 
quite cute, actually. Uh, thank you. How about my body? Also built with splines. Animating you is a matter of moving the control points to create different poses, called keyframes. The computer then automatically draws the images between the keyframes. After the artist sets colors and lighting, the final step is rendering. Rendering is when the computer completely draws all the details into each finished frame. Then the series of frames is recorded onto film or videotape, one at a time. Psst. Hey you, come over here. Check this out. You have the power to make me feel Your mind your chips can make it real Electric feelings burn so much A simulated sense of touch Another way to recreate human motion was used for this synthetic singer, Dozo. She was first built as a series of clay sculptures with different mouth positions and a clay body, which were then all digitized into the computer. Then a human figure was filmed and used as a reference for her motion. Dozo's movements were calculated, tested interactively, and then adjusted. the human body and face are so complex, replicating human motion is difficult to achieve. Computer animators are constantly working to improve the techniques they use to synchronize speech, simulate body movement, and reproduce accurate facial expressions. Dozo now has a new role as torchbearer for the 1994 Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia. Crypto is a three-dimensional computer actor made for French pay television. Crypto's animators have abstracted the human form to create a robotic, human-like character by isolating realistic-looking mouth, eye, and hand gestures. This computer-generated mermaid named Lorelei is another example of an abstracted, human-like form. Computer animators have had to overcome a lot of problems posed by things that we take for granted. Like the look of muscles moving beneath realistically textured and flexible skin, and believably moving joints. To address this, programmers have created software-based shortcuts, like splines, with movable control points. Animators first plot and test movement using wireframes, because they take less time to compute than completed images. When motion is completely worked out, the final images can then be rendered. Rhythmic motions, walking, dancing, cycling, swinging, are simplest to replicate. The action is smooth and repetitive. Its speed is relatively constant. After several main or keyframes are created, the fly is animated by using a time graph editor to interactively control speed and timing. Then a low-resolution color test is made before the fly is finally recorded frame by frame onto videotape. Using a snake movement behavior model, scientists at Apple Computer created Frank, who owes the quality of his movement to dynamic simulations of muscle contractions combined with his body's interaction with the ground.
in this vision of a unique alternative universe, animators at Japan's high-tech lab use a technique called behavioral animation. Which allows each character to use the same motions as the other characters around them while moving in different directions. While this looks real, it's actually computer-generated using a technique called particle systems to create small, well, particles. Here, students at William Patterson College in New Jersey use modern art as a subject to contribute to our acceptance of computer animation as a new art form. Artists utilize familiar and traditional fine art images to artificially accelerate the apparent maturation of the still young art form of computer animation. To indulge their sense of humor, many computer animators a skeletal animation system automatically bends their skin. Here, a simple experiment in spline modeling and motion is framed within a fairy tale. Fire was created using a system that animates particles. What fire? As the storyboards were being... ...such as that the AT&T Bell Labs created 12,000 identical robotic figures to keep themselves company in a world whose inhabitants have only one purpose, to ride on top of the wall. Unfortunately, the wall goes on forever. Perhaps a metaphor for the continuing challenges presented by computer animation. <laughs> The teapot looks familiar. It should, because teapots are a computer graphics icon. <laughs> Everyone uses them to show off new techniques. <laughs> Here at IBM in New York, researchers are developing physically-based modeling, a procedure to make computer-generated objects behave as if they were real. Like uh, when things break. Research began with a spongy cylinder dropped onto a solid surface, then to colliding rigid and soft tubes. Early braking attempts didn't look right, and pieces would come flying through the cylinder walls. They learned that to make things happen, physical properties had to be altered. For example, <laughs> to make something move, you hit it with an invisible sphere. And if you soften the teapot and hit it with a burst of gravity, you get a big sneeze. Gazuntite. It looks like gravity was suspended. Right, until it's time for it to come down. Uh, this kind of work seems to be narrowing the gap between reality and our ability to simulate it. You know, Ray, computer animation has become a fantastic new tool over the terrain of the Red Planet, at elevations ranging from 500 miles down to only 3 miles. Computer animation is a way for scientists and engineers to share their vision of possible futures. We can demonstrate the operations of a colony on our moon, or explore Mars and its moons. to promote future missions to the public. This is an event NASA would like to see in 2002. In that year, a spacecraft from Earth could reach Saturn's moon Titan and drop in for a visit.
animated commercials can have very high production values. Computer and clay animation are combined here in separate layers to create the final product. It is a time-consuming process that begins with a database for the animated character. Movement, surface texture and reflections are worked out. Next, live action is filmed on a small set and a representation of the train is created to match the film. Animators can then work out how the character fits into the scene. This takes time because these different elements must move together in unison. The hand has to look like he's actually riding inside the train. When the camera move for the closing shot was filmed, the animation was made so the train's apparent motion matches the rest of the scene. Finally, the separate elements are brought together to create a seamless, eye-catching commercial. All aboard for a great new dinner! Destination Avenir. Computer animation. This piece was produced for a British oil company with the hummingbird symbolizing ecology, fragility, and beauty. <laughs> to make this logo for a British company, footage of real clouds and images of model buildings were combined with computer animation. This piece was produced by the National Film Board of Canada to celebrate their 50th anniversary.
work is a good example of the influences of surrealist artists like Magritte and Escher on computer animation. As this digital cinema is maturing as an art form, animators are doing what painters and sculptors have done before them. Artists working in a new art form often create homages to older traditional art forms in order to gain respectability. Computer animation is a medium still under development. Here at Symbolics in Los Angeles, animators are recording their artwork onto high-definition television because they believe it's the medium of the future. Matt Elson, a director and designer, strives for naturalism with his computer animated characters. You don't see any joints on this, on this character as you look across her body. She is a seamless object in, in 3D space. You don't know that necessarily that she's a computer generated character. Is she a painting or an airbrush drawing or is this a model or is this you know a person that's been painted up this way and that kind of blurring of a line, that kind of confusion is part of what we're after. This sense of naturalism is captured in the flight of butterflies. Producer and animator Mark Scoparo created the movement of butterflies using behavior animation software, which allows each butterfly to navigate its own path. By giving the computer simple instructions, complex... Computer animation has reached a new level of maturity, with fine artists using the medium to create unique works that move away from traditionally recognizable artistic forms. subject in fine art, the human form, is abstracted through computer animation in ways not possible with marble, clay, bronze or paint. of random mutation and artistic selection. The result is a unique vision which literally grew and evolved inside the computer.
can be used to express ideas about isolation, fear, violence, and pain. Here, poetry and surrealism are combined in a very powerful vision. This work's creator wants us to focus on the aesthetic qualities of computer artwork and treat it like any other art form. Otherworldly vision is a mix of artistic elements drawn from different cultures, both real and imagined. Animation is an increasingly powerful tool used by artists and scientists to describe, interact, and communicate with the world around us, whether for art, education, visualization, entertainment, or new virtual realities. Society is rapidly changing, 